Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Biocadet K9 live this Thursday evening. Um, we are going to be talking about today conditioning. Feeling a little lost. How do you start? What must you do? Well, that was me. But let me introduce myself. My name is Angela Hearn. I'm the owner and founder of the Biokinetic K9. And I love the conditioning and fitness aspect of the dog sports that we do. I'm an IGP um, handler and competitor. And I love what conditioning and proper conditioning is doing for our dogs. So, but where do you start? I was exactly there feeling that little bit lost. Um, so if you are here, <laughs> you are uh, can watch me and you can see what's going on, please say hello um, so that I know that you guys are there. Um, let me know where you're from. That would be super interesting. So let me tell you a little bit about my story first, when I started with conditioning. Of course, most people know that I started with conditioning because of an injury. And I think many people... Um, get into or look at and see what conditioning is about only after um, an injury or an unfortunate event. And these things can so be avoided if you started these things beforehand. So for those that are post-injury and you're really going into training, especially our sport dogs, our sport dogs need conditioning, or you've got a really active dog and you want to start conditioning, where must you start? Well, there's the old thing of um, start at the beginning. That's the best place to start. But if you were like me and my dog had recovered from the injury and I know about conditioning and go like, oh, what must I do now? I went into the whole theory of things and I learned and I got myself qualified and all of that. But I still had to do conditioning for my dog. So what must you do? And the thing is, start at the very beginning. Start with foundations so I went and I looked at these foundation exercises and I thought like oh really geez is that it so my dog must do a sit to stand yeah well my dog can do that we do it all the time in training so my dog must do it down oh wow my dog already does that I really don't need this part my dog is beyond the foundations that's what I thought until I really went into it and then I thought, well, let me try the next thing. And you get stuck and you struggle. And then you see some of these exercises, you think, oh my word, look at these dogs. It's almost like gymnastics. These dogs can do all of these things. I don't know how I'm going to get there. And then you sort of get away from conditioning training because it looks really difficult and it's going to take a long time. And I don't know if I can do that. And, oh, that's going to take a lot of training. And you really talk yourself out of it. But then we had to go and I had to do some foundational exercises. And you have to do them in a particular way. So I took my dog and wow, the interesting things that I found. So where did these things help me? Why do foundations work? Why must we do it? Even though you think, oh my word, is that all my dog must do? Let your dog do it. You need to find somebody that can help you talk it through too because the, the knowledge behind the foundation work is just awesome. But let me go through five quick points about what foundation exercises, even if your dog is really good in sport and he's an active sporting competitor, what do foundation exercises do for your dog? Well, number one, your dog is skill building they for some dogs that are not have never done a, a down to a stand before or a sit to a down and they've never done this if they're learning a new skill great but the more experienced sporting dogs are also learning a new skill because in a foundational exercise your dog must perform that movement in a particular way and you're looking at certain aspects of your dog as they perform the movement. And those are the things you are supposed to learn in your foundation exercises. So your dog is developing a neuromuscular communication system now, where, for example, we don't want the feet to move in a fold back down. How many dogs can't do that? They need to move their feet and settle in and go down. 
or they need to move their feet and settle in to stand up. But in order to move into a down and then into a stand again without moving the feet requires a lot of thinking about where your body is and engaging a whole lot of muscles to make sure that everything moves at the same time, not just as they go, but to move as one component, like a, like a piston in an engine that just goes back and forth. They just go all at once. Now, we never train it in our sport, never. I think at agility, the only time a dog may be going into a down is at the start line, <laughs> or they may be in a sit. Uh, IGP, the dogs go down in an escape. There's a down on the move. There you go. That's it, all the downs stay, and then they stay down. Nobody looks at how they stand back up, and many times they don't stand back up. They have to sit. So, no, you're not training that a lot in your sport. But what you're doing in your conditioning, you are developing a new muscle memory, a new muscle engagement, how the body can all work together in their muscles as one, and what you look for in the angles of your dog, and what you look for when your dog is doing that skill. So your, your dog, even though they are really good in the sport they're doing, they are learning a new skill, and it's a, a new muscle memory, but that muscle memory is how the body can incorporate the best movement out of the muscles of the dog to do that movement fluidly. So it looks like a power move, not a fidgety move, but something that's powerful and set. And it just pops. Your dog learns a new skill. So whether they are just starting out, um, if they're good in their sport, there's a new skill building set that's happening within the body and the brain. That's what's happening. And you get to see it. You get to witness your dog. You get to see how they move. What The next thing is, while you're doing these foundation exercises, you are developing posture in your dog. Because all of these new muscles are working together to create a movement and your dog has to stand in a particular way or they have to sit in a particular way or they have to lie down in a particular way, you are building their posture. And posture is super important, especially for confirmation. Your big confirmation ring, we spoke about it the last time. And it's super important for how they move in their sport. They need optimal posture. Many sports don't develop posture. If you look at just at the healing program of IGP, the dog, it's the wrong posture for the dog. The front legs will be short stepping. The back legs never do full range of movement in healing with the head up. So they never get to develop full languid, um, strong posture. But if you look at oh, gymnasts or ballet dancers, the way they walk, they, the way they carry their body, sports people, where the way they carry their body is very different to how lay people like myself carry our body. I can slouch quite easily and lounge in my chair. So you are developing posture just from your foundational movements. But that um, posture, it's especially important for sport dogs. Because like I said, sport dogs develop a body that is good for the sport. It is not good for posture. It shortens certain muscles. It creates imbalances. But you need to have a strong, well-balanced body to be optimal in sport. So your sport is creating imbalances. Your condition is resetting those imbalances. So very important that you get those foundational movements to develop correct posture and correct full body strength for languid movements in your sport. Really important. So it's if they are developing a good posture and you know what a good posture looks like in your dog, you will immediately be able to see when the posture is off. So that means that you can more easily spot an injury in your dog. Uh, you'll be able to more easily spot a weakness in your dog. So that developing of a good posture helps you so much further while you're doing your sport because you'll be able to see exactly how your dog is moving in a sport in a day-to-day -day living exactly because you know what your dog's posture 
is supposed to look like, you know what his posture is supposed to be like in his movements. Then number three, the third benefit of just foundational exercises and why you should do them is because foundational exercises are easy to restart or they are they they're easy to start sometimes a little bit too easy by the looks of them so there is a big difference between easy and simple um foundational exercises may sound really simple but if you're just starting them, even with a well-trained um, sports dog, they are not e always easy to perform in the beginning because of those sporting imbalances. But once your dog has got those foundational exercises, and if you've been training your dog in sport, you can train them to do this, and the training happens quite quickly. And once the training gets going quite quickly, you are able to master your foundations. So once you've got those foundations under your belt, you are saying now you have to go away or there's a really bad winter or life happens and you can't train in your sport or there's a small injury and you have to rest your dog. So now because you have to create rest or whatever and those muscles start to become a little bit weaker again, uh, weaker again you are able to easily restart with your foundations and easily see where those imbalances lie. So to restart foundational exercises are easy. To start them right at the beginning may look simple, but it's not always easy for the dog to do and to learn those new muscle memories. But once they have those muscle memories, everything falls into place. So you are able to mark your progress from the foundations. If you're just jumping in the middle of conditioning, how are you able to mark your progress? It's the same as if you just jump into the middle of your sport and you don't have a solid foundation. The holes in your sport program come out a little bit later on and you really struggle in areas. You struggle to polish your sport. You struggle. But if you spend time on your foundations, the end picture, the end result of your sport is so much more uh, better, more polished, because you spent a little bit of extra time on your foundational sporting development. The same thing happens with conditioning. Spend time at the foundation because you will go back to it more and more and more, and your dog will be able to go through it. And you start off slowly, and then you can increase the speed, increase the repetitions, increase the the difficulty level, but it all comes from the foundation um, movements. If you've got foundation movements and you want to increase the difficulty of something, you know exactly how that new movement is supposed to look with your dog because you understand and you've seen your dog's posture and movement in an exercise. And that helps you progress. So you can mark your, your progress and you are able to progress from there. You'll able, you are able to see it more clearly. And the really nice thing about foundation exercises is it's for all ages. So whether you're watching and you don't do sports, you've just got a really active dog, or you are a sports handler and you do do sports, um, you've got a puppy or you've got a senior dog that you need to take it more easy with. All of those dogs can start with foundation exercises. There's no exclusion, really, really. Most, most, most dogs can start off with foundation exercises. I even had the opportunity to speak to a really top, top competitor, somebody that's going to the WSB this year. And he started some foundational exercises with these dogs. And he said, wow, even with the dog that's going to the competition. And he said, wow, he can already see the difference in his dog. And that's a top competitor. So your foundational exercises, don't make it so complicated. Let the dog understand and learn the muscle um, communication in the body of how to use his body optimally and strongly for his sport. So 
Foundation exercises is for all ages, all dogs. Doesn't matter what you're doing with your dog. From puppy to senior to sport hero to the active dog to the couch king. You can do foundational exercises. Just because you think, oh, my dog already is that good and we do all these sports and my dog is going to whatever championship, etc. If you've never done conditioning and you're wondering, what can it do for your dog? Start with foundation exercises. You'd be surprised how quickly your dog gets tired just doing those simple exercises. Remember, they may sound simple, they may look simple, but they're not always easy to perform. So it's good for joints of old dogs because you get nice movement in the joints. It's low impact. It's safe for puppies to do. Um, you get nice movement throughout the range of the body. And it's good for the spirit of both the dog and the owner because you get to laugh with your dog. You get to see the cogwheels of their brain start to work and they get super excited to perform the exercises because there's lots of rewards and lots of treating so everybody feels good afterwards it's for all ages it's awesome to do and number five it has huge physical and mental stimulation your dog really learns about how you teach um so when we're doing um, training for sport and everything, we train our dogs and there's certain things, there's new things that they have to learn. And sometimes they have to learn it in a certain way. And we always are looking for a high drive dogs that can come in and work and everything else. But have you ever thought about how you are teaching your dog something so that they can actually think about it? Have you ever seen your dog's eyes where they're thinking about a command and they're working it out? It is the most awesome thing to see. Their eyes, their pupils go big and small as they're thinking about these things. So there's loads of mental stimulation and they, your dog learns more about you and how you teach. And you, you will learn more from your dog and how your dog thinks and how he tries to figure things out and how he's trying to show you something. And if he doesn't understand what he tries to do to get the treat, or they're all coming there to the platform and they go, oh, let me go first. That's what happens with my dogs. I've got to put them all aside one at a time because they all want to do it all at the same time. So there's lots of mental stimulation. And of course, the physical stimulation is there because these are, they, the dogs are working muscles that they may not be working in their sport. So your foundation exercises generally covers the whole body and it's, it's um, something that the whole body benefits from with the dog. So just like if you are just starting to go to gym and you've never gone to gym before in your life and you want to do a squat, there's no way that you should go and stand under a barbell and do a squat. First do the squat and see the mechanics of how your body moves. Are your knees over your toes? Are you performing the movement safely? The same thing happens with your foundation exercise. Is the movement that's happening with your dog, is it safe? Are they working the correct muscles? Are they going through the range of the motion? All of these things happen physically, and so they develop the muscle memory and the mental stimulation of how to work so that one day when they're on the field, they don't even have to think about what they're doing with the body. So when you're doing that, um, that was it on the, the motions on the move, um, if you're doing those motions on the move, and you're doing you healing at fast pace, and suddenly your dog has to go and do a stand, that muscle memory sets in, and the stand happens. And they know how to stand, and they know how to hold their posture, and you get less of that foot movement where you are going to be losing points against those dogs that can't stand properly, and they do have that foot movement, and they lose a part. Your dog will know how to stand. That is the benefit. That's a, those are the, the, the polished results of solid foundation work. And your conditioning helps your training. So if you are um, training your dog for sport, just like as in sport training, strong foundations, they help your dog stand out. They really do. Um, you'll be more positive about your dog's ability on the field, in, in, the, in the sport that you are doing. 
You will be, this is a little bit controversial, but if you understand the foundation, ab foundation ability of your dog and the foundation understanding and that you have the understanding behind what you're doing and why you're doing a particular exercise, starting with your foundation, it's less likely that you will ever be misled by those that think they know. Kay, hi, how are you? Thank you for joining. Awesome. Um, so you'll be less likely misled by those that think they know. And you'll be able to advocate more for your dog. Um, you'll know your dog much better and you'll know how to get the best out of your dog. The best because you're not working blind. You're seeing the ability of your dog. You'll be able to see the weaknesses better because you've analyzed their posture in the movements that you're doing in those foundation exercises. And you'll quickly recognize what is missing in your dog. What areas does he need to make uh, be stronger for his sport? Certain sports create imbalances. Certain sports um, uh, require strength in various areas of the dog. And by you doing these exercises, you will be able to more quickly see where those weaknesses lie. Not just in your sport, but in your dog because a sport creates an imbalance. So is the imbalance the, the weakness you're seeing in your sport or is it a particular area? So I see a lot of people say, oh, I need rear strength for my dog. But is it rear strength or rear and core? And if you just do the rear strength on your dog, what about the front? Are you gonna cause another imbalance? How do you correct the imbalances that already exist? Do you know that they are there? Your foundations show you that. So. The big thing for me is why I'm doing this um, topic tonight is because I think many people will know and some of you have attended my canine athlete workshop and people want to know, well, what exercises do we do now? How do we go forward? So I've got a foundational program that's coming up at the end of this month. And if you'd like to be notified about when that foundation program goes live and you can sign up please just comment foundations in the comments below and then i will make sure to send you an email to let you know that we are going to be launching it and i will send you all the information that you need so when we do our foundations um, program i not only show you the exercises but i'll be explaining what to look for what to look for if something is going wrong and how to um, manage that, how to take your dog further. There are progressions in that foundational course that make all those foundation courses or exercises a little bit more difficult as your dog goes. And we'll also give you um, when is the best time to progress. So if you are interested in Joining our foundations program, it's our foundation strength program because most dogs don't have enough strength in their sport. Just like humans, every single human that does high-end sport, they are all in the gym and they need to make their body stronger to handle the sport. So we're going to be doing our foundational strength program. And if you're interested, Bob, hey, you are already there. Okay, I've got you down. If you are interested in our foundations of uh, course, it's not live now. It will be going live later on this month. Just put uh, in the comments foundations and I will get hold of you. Um, as we go along, I'll tell you more and more. So that is conditioning and where to start. If you are unsure, start at the beginning. Don't start in the middle. Start at the beginning so that you can read your dog. We've got a body checks for injury workshop. So I've got two workshops and a lot of them, the one it explains about sport and conditioning and the other one is how to pick up certain injuries on a static dog. And these things, now that you can see them and you apply your foundations training, you'll be able to see exactly more about what you're, you'll understand more about what you're seeing in your dog. And that's the most important. How do you progress? Even if you are just training out on the field, and you are not too sure there's something off with your dog, check your dog with the Body Checks for Injury workshop. The, the workshops have got awesome information, and nobody really tells you. They, I was a little bit um, 
trepidatious about putting those workshops out. But before you do any sport, before you do any conditioning program, you need to be able to see how your dog's body looks. Is there anything off? Is there anything out? Are they hiding an injury? Especially our sport dogs. And those workshops show you that. So once you've got those workshops going, or if you just want to go into the foundations course, because we will touch on those areas too, um, then let me know. Um, I'll put my workshop links in the, in the comments below. But there you have it. So remember, what do foundation uh, exercises show you? Start at the beginning. They will show you about building a new skill in your dog, getting that muscle memory going. You will develop awesome posture in your dog, and that will be able to highlight any uh, something that's off with your dog, highlight any possible discomfort within your dog. Then you will be able to, if anything happens, you will be able to restart uh, with foundations and then pr quickly progress to where you were, just to get that body moving again. Um, you, it's for all ages. It's not just for a dog that's never done anything. It's not just for a puppy. It's not just for old uh, dogs. It's, it's for top-end sport people, too, that haven't gone into conditioning. Where do you start? If you've got a, a serious condition... Uh, trial dog, if you've got a serious competition dog and you want to start conditioning, you don't want to start conditioning in such a way that you can create an injury because that is super easy. So you want to start at the very basics where it's con where, with conditioning so that it will enhance your sport where you are. You don't want to do something that is risky for your dog because advanced conditioning is exactly that for the advanced dog and it's very risky for a dog that doesn't understand what they need to do with their conditioning um, of course it also provides huge mental and physical stimulation for your dog you'll get to learn more about your dog your dog learns how to think and they learn about how you teach them all right so riani you are here yes um <laughs> Bob, how's the Tuxa thing going with Rioni? Oh. Okay, guys, so I trust you had a very awesome, uh, if you're a little bit lost, find out about a foundation program. If you um, don't know of one, we are having one opening up at the end of the month. Let me know and I will let you know all about it too. Uh, our foundations program is about the foundation exercises, why the what's the how comes, because for me, I don't like to just do something that's what my, which was my big block with um, foundation exercises, is that, like, oh, really? I tell you, yes, really, and why? It is so really, and you'll understand that, wow, you'll really see what's happening with your dog. So that's what our foundation program is all about. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, we will be sending out more information through the month. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me put out some of my information. Uh, let me put this in here. There and there. And then I'm going to be saying cheers, everybody. Ah, oh, thank you, Riani. Thank you very much. Look at these, my members, they're all talking to one another here. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. All right, guys, I will, let, uh, I will be going and um, I will see you next week. Cheers, everybody.